Hi, here's a revised explanation as to why I'm out here in the desert trying to see if I can get trees to grow. Um, and this is revised based on some very valuable feedback that my first attempt was slow, incoherent, and long-winded. So I'll do my very best to remedy those deficiencies now. Um, so why am I here? Why bother trying to grow trees in the desert? Well, first of all, I just love trees. I don't know why. I just geek out on trees. I love looking at trees, reading about trees, studying trees, and growing trees. And uh, I'm not sure why I'm that way. I just am that way. And uh, secondly, I was wondering if I could do something, do some good in the world um, with trees. And as you know, or may know, there's a growing crisis in the world uh, related to deforestation and desertification. And um, it's not just a big picture, statistical type thing uh, that's out there vaguely in the world, but for some people it's very real daily suffering, life and death struggle. Uh, let's say you um, are a subsistence farmer trying to scratch out a living um, in an area that's near desert. You're trying to grow food for yourself, your wife, and your children. And uh, as the desert expands, which it does every day, it expands over your land. And you can no longer grow food for yourself and your family. And um, so it, you could starve to death, and people are starving to death. Uh, or if you migrate somewhere else, you might not be welcome in the place you migrate to, which causes conflict. So, at a minimum, for real individual people, deforestation and desertification are causing extreme suffering and also, in some cases, death. So, <clears throat> um, but planting trees uh, in the desert can, you know, help mitigate this, this problem and because um, it stops the desert from expanding and if you can plant trees t that also have food value, well even better, you've got something to eat f for directly from the trees. Um, and for me, uh, a third reason, so the first reason I love trees and also wanted to see what I could do uh, to help people affected by desertification. And thirdly for me there's a spiritual component. Um, in the Old Testament of the Bible. Uh, there are several passages which talk about trees in the desert. It's a, it's a picture, an illustration of God's Spirit being poured out. For Here's one example um, in Isaiah or Isaiah, depending on how you like to pronounce it. Uh, Isaiah 32, 15. Till the Spirit is poured on us from on high, and the desert becomes a fertile field, and the fertile field seems like a forest. So, that's also a factor for me. Um, and many people have uh, given me um, advice or suggestions on, on ways that I could grow trees in the desert. Um, and I'm sure the, the, these, the advice and suggestions will, will work. Uh, I mean, they do work. But the thing about a lot of the uh, advice I've been given is that it costs money. Um, and, and for sure, if you have a lot of money, you, you can grow trees in the desert. If you have a lot of, there's a lot of industrial equipment um, that can be used, plus if you can add water, there's devices actually that can get water out of the air, condensation, um, and I'm sure those work. But the thing is that I'm thinking is that a lot of the people that need uh, trees the most for their survival probably don't have access to the, the money, the resources um, that are available, this, this kind of technology. So, uh, and maybe, maybe in the end you, we, we, I will need to use this, this kind of technology to be successful. But I still haven't given up on uh, trying to find uh, low-cost methods, effective and yet low-cost methods of uh, growing trees in the desert. Um, 
So what, my, what I'm being trying to do is to see if digging a really deep pit will be enough. I'm just, that's just, it's as simple as that. That's what I'm hoping because I've noticed uh, if you watch shows about the desert that if, uh, I mean, when you have uh, land like this, you, you don't get trees, or at least you get these very sparse little trees um, when it's flat like this. But uh, at that rocky outcrop over there, for example, against that rocky outcrop you get far, far more Joshua trees. You get, um, I don't know if you can see them in this video, but anyway. But that's because of the runoff from the rocky outcrop. It makes the, the land around the rocky outcrop have more water. So, so that's an example. And um, <clears throat> so basically whenever you get a valley or a uh, gully canyon in the desert, you tend to, that's where you, you might find more trees at the bottom of that because of course, obviously with the runoff from the, the sides of the, let's, let's just call it a valley, um, the water concentrates down at the bottom, soaks in more deeply, also, uh, evaporation is reduced. Uh, some of it's not quite as hot down there because there's fewer hours of sunlight, um, and it gives trees a better chance of growing. So, my uh, little pet hypothesis is that if we can dig big enough, wide enough, deep enough uh, pits out here, that it might just be enough to allow the conditions for for trees to grow. That's my uh, hypothesis. I know a lot of people are skeptical, um, but we'll see. I just I haven't given up on it yet. Um, but a year from now, if this doesn't work, then maybe I'll have to give up. <clears throat> but um, anyway, so here's an example of a pit I dug yesterday. Um, it has actually two seedlings in it. This is based on, well, I said it wasn't going to be long-winded, but um, <laughs> well, well, so I was reading a book called The Hidden Life of Trees and um, it talks about how trees communicate with each other. They, trees that are in contact with other trees um, live longer than trees that are just isolated by themselves. So, uh, well, especially if they're in contact with trees of their own species. Trees have apparently have ways of communicating between each other through their roots and also with the aid of fungi or fungi. Um, and also they also communicate uh, through the air, you know, uh, releasing aromatic compounds. Anyway, so it seems like it's actually it might be better to have two trees of the same species in the same pit. Apparently when they're the same species they don't compete um, with each other. So, so this pit, I'm hoping you can get an idea of the scale with, with the shovel and the pick next to it. Um, it actually took several hours because the soil is just so harsh here. It's, there's a, several inches of like concrete-like soil. It takes a long time to drill through with the auger. So actually I wound up using the auger probably something like 25, maybe even 30 times yesterday. Um, in, in combination, of course, with the pick and the shovel to dig this pit. So I'm hoping this will be enough. Um, and I said I was going to try not to be long-winded, so I'll leave it at that for now.